I'm Giulia Gandini. I'm a writer director, originally Italian, as you can probably tell from the accent. Um, but I've been based in London in the UK for the past seven years. Um, and I now direct predominantly TV content, but also, you know, short films, uh, both in London and in Rome. I'm Christina Maleska. I am originally from Macedonia, that's where I was born, but I've been living in Canada for most of my life. Um, I'm based in Toronto and I'm a filmmaker. Most of my work has been um, short films and then I'm just working on my first feature. Would you consider afloat the piece of work you've directed that you're the proudest of or does it have a special place in your heart? Afloat was like a really, um, I had finished um, film school just like a year before and I had tackled this like massive sci-fi short with like a huge crew and VFX and all these like moving pieces and um, the film was great and it turned out but I had the worst time making it like I was getting like nosebleeds every night after shooting and like I love that I made this film, but I absolutely hated the process of doing it. And it kind of terrified me to jump into to something else because of how um, difficult that experience was for me. And so with a float, it was like, I'm gonna get my like five closest friends and the girl, the young girl in it is my cousin. And we're just gonna go, <laughs> yeah. no, we're just gonna go and shoot something on a weekend and it, if it doesn't turn out, no one has to see it. But I really just wanted to be like, do I even want to do this? Like, do I want to be a filmmaker knowing that like my <laughs> mental health will like suffer? Mm. And we had a lovely time and it was such a wonderful experience. And it really made me like fall back in love with the process. And it was really like reassuring to make something just like bare bones no lights, just a couple of people. Um, with your film, did you um, have a message you were trying to send or like, what was the thought process behind it? it the, the film started off similarly to yours in some aspects, because it was something that I initially perceived as very personal. And it, it was the very first short film that I not only directed, but wrote as well. It's just because I had this memory from middle school that I needed to exercise <laughs> out of me mm -hmm. and, and share with people and give it more of a positive spin. I was considering just, you know, making it for, you know, shooting for only one day with just a few friends and not that much budget, but, but it became something bigger than I was initially expecting especially with the festival run but like for me like i had directed short films before and i was proud of them i was happy with them but my time was really that one piece of work that gave my my professional life a new trajectory mm -hmm. not only because it gave me new confidence in my skills but also because literally it became a calling card for me and it still is a calling card. Um, it's the reason why I networked with so many new producers that are now believing in me and giving me opportunities to pitch for content. Like, and it's, mm -hmm. it's funny to think that it's all based on this memory that I have from when I was 12. And the character, the young girl in it, she's just so like sweet. Your young girl like looked amazing. I'm I'm amazed by the fact that she's your cousin. How did you direct her though? Like, how do you direct? Did she have experience acting? Or? No, <laughs> she. I think she just really didn't want to let me down. And and she, okay, she was running and she was like, I'm really tired. I'm really tired. And I just be like, just one more, please. Come on, you're just one more and just like okay okay um, I think for her too it's like I, I I kind of told her about what inspired me to tell the story and it was centered around her too because she's a, a huge part of my life and I was like it's just about this like you know young girl who's who's kind of faced with 
not feeling the best about herself and a situation and and she chooses to run away but you know that brings joy to others around her and she realizes like the power she she holds within herself and 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 I think she like with kids too talking them through it and speaking to them like they're just you know an adult who can understand and they can understand is is always just being like the most honest and the most forward and they'll be like yeah no I get it I felt that way before I I for me as well it's all about treating them as adults really mm -hmm. like being very genuine straightforward having a conversation about what they need to express in front of camera and you know what the motivation is and making them feel as comfortable as possible to achieve that yeah because I mean they get it even if they like anybody even if you haven't been through this exact situation you haven't had experiences that have made you feel like bad about yourself or uncomfortable or not good enough and and any everybody can relate to that it's a very human feeling yeah plus I have the feeling that like if you talk to kids as if they were kids like if you're in any way patronizing that doesn't really work that doesn't really build trust I was recently um like thinking about why was this specific film of mine different from the others that I had previously made I mean I literally think is three things one, the emotional attachment that I had to the project, because it was the first one that I, you know, I wrote myself and it was based on a personal experience and it was the first time I was directing something like that. And then the second thing was keeping it short. For me, that made such a big difference. Not, I mean, I'm not saying all shorts, short films should be under six minutes or under four minutes. But to me, making it a very specific, direct moment in someone's life and allocating all of my resources in one character, one location, very little dialogue and a lot of visual storytelling, it made such a creative difference, but also production value difference mm -hmm. compared to everything that I had done before. And I find that um, like, something that's so like short and sweet is also so memorable because people leave the theater and it's just like a little punch to your gut when you watch it and people really remember that feeling. And and then like the last thing was really like distribution, <laughs> like just getting it out there the right way so that you could reach the right audiences and the right people because festival distribution can be so daunting sometimes oh, for sure yeah my preference definitely lies in young female leads and coming of age stories and those stories usually are they are high stakes but they're not life or death and i think that's why i'm drawn to these like young protagonists it's because i feel like i was very much like shaped by the experiences I had when I was when I was like between 10 and 15 like it it's really when you kind of define not that you don't change and grow but you really define yourself and those you you figure out kind of like the broad strokes of who you are and then as you go you kind of like fill in the details I really love um like visual visual stories that are quite quiet and you can really just play with the um, momentum of your character, like just seeing someone move through their day and how that pace of life is um, portrayed on screen. So it's what I'm working on at the moment is just kind of like seeing a, a character and what they're like when they're alone and how to portray that and how to reveal who they are in those quiet moments. But I mm -hmm. find it so emotionally powerful and direct when something is expressed without the need to express it through words. Like when it's a gesture or, you know, like the interaction with an object or just a, an expression, literally, like a glimpse in the eye, that mm. that really gets me at the heart. Okay, um, what, was the, what was the first project that made you fall in love with soul making? I have this project of mine that I'm incredibly proud of 
and I consider one of my best works, even though it's really not. And it's the very <laughs> first thing that I filmed. It was literally me and no one else with an iPhone. And it's just this weird black and white art video slash experimental slash documentary. Um, and, you know, people watch it and they either go, what was that? That didn't make any sense. <laughs> or they go, oh, my God, that was so deep. That that touched me on so many levels. Like, there's no in between, basically. Either you get it 100% and you love it or you hate it and you think I'm mental. The reason why it's special to me is because it was the very first project that was screened in front mm -hmm. of an audience in a room with me being present and that feeling yeah. I you know like I had never had it before I had never had anything of mine screened on a big screen in front of 20 plus people and only halfway through it I found the courage to kind of look around me and study people's reaction to it I remember that moment as one of the moments where I was like, oh my God, I want to feel this again. I had a very, very similar experience. I'm not like a, a natural born leader. So I went into film school knowing I loved film and I wanted to be some part of it, but I didn't necessarily want to direct. Um, and in our first year, we had to make like a black and white film shot on 16 millimeter. I remember like people had to pair off and have a partner, but we were an uneven number in my class or something. So I was the only person making this on my own. And just that like feeling of being like, I thought of this and now it's a thing that exists is so addictive. You're like, I could just think of things and then I can make them and then they're, I think I got like a C <laughs> in the class, um, but it was just so amazing to be like, I thought of this and it exists and other people are watching it and and they're like laughing at all the right parts and they're gasping at all the right parts. And you just feel like incredibly powerful in that moment. And it's the most, again, so super terrifying to watch it with other people. What is the best piece of, uh, advice you've received in terms of filmmaking? I don't remember exactly. I think it was when I was in film school that one of the tutors told me something that initially really puzzled me. And that was that in the film and TV industry, the directors that make it are not necessarily the most talented ones. It's the ones that keep on going no matter what. Which I initially didn't agree with. I was like, there's no way. Like, oh, of course you need talent to go ahead. And if you have talent, uh, it's always going to go uphill. There's no way anything is going to stop you. And mm -hmm. then I got out of film school and I realized that my tutor was so right. Because like, when you get out of film school, you don't have that safe space mm -hmm. anymore. Um, you don't have as much of a support system. You need to find your people all over again. And suddenly you're calling yourself a director and people look at you and they're like, yeah, I mean, are you really though? <laughs> um, are you? Like, there's nobody pushing you to do it. It's mm -hmm. not like, it's not a nine to five job where you have the boss checking that you arrive on time. It's like either you push yourself to do it or you're just going to stop doing it. And for a lot of time, I don't know your experience, but like in my experience, it's like it's not easy to earn money out of directing when you're young and you're at the beginning of your career. It's not easy for people to recognize you as a director and take you seriously as a director. If you're a woman under 25, it comes with a whole new set mm -hmm. of, of challenges. You know, like the few people that I know from film school that are still consistently directing and on a trajectory that seems uphill, that no matter how many doors they had slammed in their faces, they just kept on pushing and pushing and pushing. And I feel like it's going to be like this for my whole life, really. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I've come to terms with it. 
you get a lot of rejection and you just kind of have to like sit with it and deal with it and keep going and it's absolutely brutal like it's much easier to just get a full-time job and and live a life where you don't feel like you're constantly like trying to achieve something but getting like pulled back for me i i i'm, I'm writing at the moment um and someone recently said that like no ideas are original all ideas kind of exist and if you don't just take that and make it someone else will and you'll see your idea in a film like a few years later and you'll just be like why didn't i write that i've really like hold, held on to that and i'm like you know what i'm just gonna write it because if i write it then it'll be mine because again we're we're only human and we are continuously telling the same stories in different ways. You cannot spend like your whole life waiting for perfection, like the perfect mm. idea. Uh, and, and, you know, time passes by and you never know what might happen in life. You never know what might get in the way. You never know what might change tomorrow. Like there needs to come a moment where you just embrace what you have and you go for it. My ear is usually split like 50-50 or 60-40, where I'm like 60% of the time, like actively working on a project, either on set or like in pre-production, post-production or on something. The whole rest of the year is me alone in front of a laptop, begging producers for pitch meetings or to have introductory coffees or like writing, writing my own ideas, hoping that one day they're gonna get made into TV series or films. It's not always easy. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's important to have the positivity and confidence to call yourself a director, whether you're writing a thing on your own for in your pajamas for three months in a row, or you're like, you know, on set with like uh, 50 people around you and you're doing a stunt sequence, like either or is still part of directing and it's important yeah. to embrace it, I guess. Yeah, you're totally right. That's exactly it. You go from being like a single person with no one to talk to, to being thrown into like a giant group of people where everyone is asking you questions and you're like, Bob, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> How did it go from there to here? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I mean, that's the beauty. I, I think that's so, th that's the beauty of it. I mean, the point is no matter how, I mean, it's, it's exciting, it's scary. Uh, it makes you love yourself and hate yourself. Um, mm -hmm. Like I, I cannot, no matter how difficult it gets at times to self-motivate myself, in the end, I always think there's nothing else I could do. Like this yeah. is this is what I was born to do. And I found it at 22. I found it and I can I can't I can't let it go. Like I cannot I don't even know who I would be like without directing and films like I, I literally don't know.